Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is my uh, presentation visible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank AIS for giving me this opportunity. Well, I will be giving a brief uh, outline on the diabetic retinopathy. As we all know that India has already become a capital of diabetes globally, the prevalence of diabetic retinopathy is also increasing in India. Based on the landmark study of the Chennai Urban Rural Epidemiological Study, the prevalence is 17.6%, out of which 20.8% in the known diabetics and 5.1% in the newly diagnosed diabetics. Now, the basics, basic classification of diabetic retinopathy uh, along with the non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which passes on from mild, moderate, severe, and then progresses to proliferative diabetic retinopathy. On the other hand, the maculopathy, we need to see whether it is a center involving maculopathy or a non-center involving maculopathy. So it depends on the retinal signs, the exact stage of the retinopathy. Now, coming to the diabetes and visual loss, what is the relation? The patients with diabetic retinopathy is 25 times more likely to be blind than non-diabetic patients. And diabetic macular edema is the common cause of blindness in the people of working age group, that is a younger age group, and can develop in both the type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. And 8% of diabetic patients developed DME with visual impairment. Now, coming to the investigation and the uh, based on the theme of this uh, entire webinar, we are most of the time focused on the ophthalmic investigation. We actually forget about the systemic control. So we need to focus, other than ophthalmic investigation and uh, diagnosis and treatment, we need to see what, what is the state of the glycemic control, what level of the HbA1c, the renal profile, lipid profile, and blood pressure color. Simultaneously, we should refer to our endocrinologist uh, for, for a diabetic checkup and proper control. And uh, it has already been proved that lowering the HV1C reduces the risk of complication. Lowering just 1% of HV1C reduces 21% death related to diabetes. 37% microvascular complications are reduced and 14% myocardial infarction. So how important is glycemic control along with the treatment of the diabetic retinopathy? Now, this is based on the Steno2 study. There are a lot of uh, recommendation from international association. So if, if the criteria is kept like this, the, the, the chances of the microvascular complications like retinopathy is reduced. Obviously, uh, these are very strict uh, intensive control. So uh, this are just for a recommendation, just we should, uh, should keep in mind and refer to the endocrinologist for a strict control, not only diabetes, but also blood pressure and the, as well as cholesterol. Now recommended eye examination schedule when type one diabetes has been diagnosed at least uh, after three to five years should have an examination or a, a recommended follow-up is at least once in a year, type two at the time of diagnosis and obviously after yearly. Definitely the schedule changes, it depends on the stage of the diabetic retinopathy detected. Now, coming to the dilated retinal examination, the fundus lens and the slit lamp evaluation is mandatory, and as well as the binocular indirect ophthalmoscopy. Um, fundus photography, uh, the, what is the rationale behind uh, taking a fundus photography? Obviously, it identifies the stage of the retinopathy. It helps in the documentation. We can compare with the previous pictures. We can actually explain the patient whether the, your retinopathy is progressing or not or rather the response to the treatment can be documented. Now coming to the digital fundus angiography, once upon a time we were doing very frequently, but uh, in fact, a lot of endocrinologists sent to the ophthalmologist uh, saying that a DFA is needed to screen out, uh, to screen the diabetic retinopathy. Uh, just to mention, it's, this is not a screening tool uh, nowadays. It, it, it obviously helps, to, uh, helps in treatment or rather guides us in treatment. It gives us a uh, state of the macular perfusion when there is uh, unexplanatory visual loss. Identification on the neovascularization when 
there is a confusion way when we are a little bit we are not very sure about the neovascularization clinically and identify the focal or the diffuse ligand definitely helps in planning sometimes a laser the most important investigation tool is the oct the rationale is to quantify the macular fluid edema and we know a lot about the vitro retinal interface whether there is any vitro macular traction the erm or sometimes at vitroscisis as well it differs the types uh, differentiates the different types of macular edema and the treatment can be planned accordingly so it guides in the treatment protocol and also see the response to the treatment and in fact the most important uh, advantage of the oct it, it's a, a very important patient educational tool the patient is patient can see whether the macular edema is increasing or decreasing with the treatment ultrasonography yes when there is no view definitely in a case of a vitreous hemorrhage we need to rule out whether there is a presence of a trd or not in the presence of the trd we have to operate as quickly as possible and if there is no trd we can actually wait for 4 to 6 weeks so diabetic retinopathy the aims of therapy is two one is the reduction of the vessel hyperpalmability and leakage of macular edema and another is there the treatment of neovascularization in pdr so there are some classic indications like pdr with high risk characteristics and cac with some extrafovea leakage as you can see in this picture the laser there is the pre laser and the post laser but definitely uh, there are other indications where we need to do the laser especially if there is nvi or if there is a severe npdr but there is high risk factors like pregnancy hypertension renal failure elevated lipids or the patient is undergoing a cataract surgery one eye patient the other eye is lost due to diabetes or advanced diabetic eye disease or a non compliant patients unlike to do follow up so in a severe npdr also we do the laser uh obviously laser treatment is destructive and cannot restore the vision loss and all that has already occurred so uh there was a need for a better tolerated and less destructive therapy so the role of vegf came in diabetic uh, the, it has been already proved that the vegf plays a major role in the patients in dr which mediates active intraocular neovascularization and breakdown of blood brain barrier so thus this new treatment came Uh, starting from triamcinolone acetate to lucentis avastin macugen ozodex and uh, now the new medicine the pegenex and most of the patients actually respond pretty well with the anti vegf and uh, combined with a laser it is always and uh, uh, practically we have to combine with laser at times but studies has proved that the prompt laser uh, we can actually defer the laser within 6 months following the anti vegf therapy and in a pseudophagic patient the steroid also works pretty well and can be comparable with the monotherapy of anti vegf uh, this is another therapy dexamethasone intravitreal implant which is done in few pseudophagic patients and patients where the anti vegfs are contraindicated as you can see in this case in the first three injections there there was no response at all and when a ozodex injection was given it responded pretty well sometimes the change of anti vegf also works so the first four injections was lucentis didn't respond much but when it was changed from lucentis to aflevirsib it responded pretty well so some patients do get a better effect when the anti vegfs are changed uh, i think this is something new which should be kept in mind when little bit of srf is there a small intracystic space or a vitreoretinal adhesions this are good prognostic biomarkers so which actually responds better with the anti vegf and the second and the second set of pictures there's a hyperreflective foci the more the hyperreflective foci bad is the uh, uh, prognostic marker it's a bad prognostic marker but definitely another thing is there it is also an inflammatory biomarkers where steroid can be planned and the last set of pictures are the last cystic spaces with viscous fluid which is considered to be the bad prognostic marker Uh, lastly the indication for vitrectomy yes with the vitreous hemorrhage is not clearing or there is a progressive fibrovascular proliferation if the tractional detachment is threatening the macula or a combined trd with rrd we should plan for surgery uh the point which needs to be emphasized that earlier we operate the visual prognosis is better definitely with with the latest uh, instrumentation we do get a good anatomical result but if it is late the functional uh improvement is not that great so to conclude we should remember along with the diabetic uh, the ophthalmic 
uh, diagnosis and treatment. We should keep the uh, keep in mind the ABCs, that is HB1C, blood pressure, and cholesterol. And eye examination, definitely the annual dilated eye examination is mandatory. Diabetes with excellent blood sugar control with no diabetic retinopathy also needs an annual checkup. And obviously, depending on the stage, there needs a frequent eye examination. And as we all know, the earlier diagnosis and treatment, it definitely uh, prevents the blindness from diabetes. Thank you.